What is up, Dom Army? It's your boy Royce. So um, I, I have just a tiny bit of news to share with you guys. So there's this uh, award called, um, you may have heard of it, it's called the Nobel Prize. And um, you know, I just learned that today, Penn Medicine won it. I saw this news this morning and I thought, wow, how fitting. Let me uh, <laughs> go into lab real quick, fail a few experiments, and then uh, I'll just go home and uh, make this video. So uh, here I am. They won the 2023 Nobel Prize in Medicine. This was awarded to uh, two Penn researchers, uh, Catalin Carrico and Drew Weissman. And uh, they were awarded for discovering essentially, you know, the mRNA vaccine technology, the uh, platform, you know, that um, the Pfizer, uh, BioNTech, and Moderna um, COVID vaccines are based on and that have, you know, completely revolutionized the world. So, um, yeah, this isn't like the biggest, um, you know, surprise, I guess, because uh, first of all, you know, the COVID vaccine, um, everyone knows about it. Um, it has pretty much revolutionized the world, has saved countless lives, millions of lives, um, has brought us out of the pandemic that has affected us starting 2020. And another thing is that the researchers, Drew and Katie, um, they had already won like pretty much the second biggest awards under the Nobel Prize. They won, you know, the Lasker Award, they won the uh, Breakthrough Prize. Many of the people who win these um, prizes go on to win the Nobel Prize. So this wasn't like the biggest surprise. I think it was just a matter of time, to be honest with you. I think um, it was just a matter of when and not if. But um, here we are, you know, Penn Medicine can, um, you know, celebrate this, this really amazing accomplishment this really amazing accomplishment of you know science and perseverance. There, there are so many lessons that you can learn from this. Um, you know, first of all, Drew and Katie are um, extremely nice people. They are honestly very much role model scientists, and um, you know I feel very blessed to be at this institution at uh, the University of Pennsylvania at Penn Medicine, and to um, you know be a part of this you know kind of culture uh, of science and innovation, and um, you know changing the world, saving lives. This is this is what it's all about. You know what I mean? Um, and so you know. There are a lot of celebrations on campus today, actually. And, um, <clears throat> you know, Drew and Katie would uh, give little talks and stuff. And there, there was, it was just a happy time, you know what I mean? And, and it was great to be on campus. Honestly, this is a pretty amazing science story. So uh, Katie and Drew, they, they met pretty serendipitously. You know, way back when, in the olden days, um, they would have to photocopy scientific papers. You know, it wasn't super easy to read scientific papers, these article entries um, on the internet like we can today. Um, you you know you would have to photocopy it, and so Katie and Drew they actually met at the photocopy machine at Penn. You know you know it's a building that I walk by all the time. That same building that's where you know this serendipitous event happened, where they you know met each other. They t they talked about the science. Um, you know Katie was working on mRNA. Uh, you know Drew was working on you know the the mouse models, and um, they they found a way to collaborate. You know they're both very much interested in mRNA. They they found a common interest. And uh, they just started working together, and this was, um, you know, decades ago. You know, at the time, Katie, um, she was struggling for funding. You know what I mean? It, it was, it was hard for her to keep her position um, as faculty at Penn, and she was uh, kind of bouncing around. And, um, you know, she would, she couldn't get grants because people didn't really believe in this mRNA, you know, technology. But, uh, you know, she was really persistent, and uh, she's obviously, you know, extremely smart. So she knew that this kind of thing would work. She, she believed in the science, and, um, you know, working with this uh, collaboration. Um, they were they were able to work it out and they were able to you know mature this um, technology they were able to you know license it out to BioNTech to Moderna to um, you know for them to develop the mRNA uh, COVID vaccine it's kind of amazing to think about just how much luck played a role in um, their situation and um, obviously with COVID you know that's that's what really you know made the mRNA uh, vaccine technology um, take off that that gave them you know um, a target that was achievable that was um, pressing, that was urgent, you know what I mean? And so, um, you know, because of the COVID pandemic, um, that also made the mRNA vaccine um, technology obviously so important to humanity. And you know, you think of Moderna, they were using the um, mRNA technology um, and, and they were kind of a unicorn company, you know, they, they had a valuation of, a one, of one billion, you know, very quickly, but um, they just, uh, they didn't really have, you know, that one disease that would, you know, let them take off and, and COVID happened. And, and, you know, all these stars aligned for uh, this technology to really, to really blossom. And so, you know, science is one of those things where, you know, it's not just like, obviously you learn it in, in school and it's like, you know, you read a textbook and it's like, okay, it's all these processes and, and stuff like that. But it's also, you know, there's a lot of context involved. There's a lot of, you know, um, uh, world events, social events that occur. Um, you know, these kinds of things is what makes science really interesting too, is this the history of it. And, uh, you know, another thing I want to talk about is the importance of immigrants in science. You know, uh, Katie came from Hungary, you know, and, and she, she came to Philadelphia from Hungary. Um, I think the story goes, she didn't have more than like, you know, a hundred or a few hundred dollars in her 
um, you know, possession when she came over and, um, you know, had to work from the ground up and, and I think didn't make over, you know, a salary of like 60K for, for many years, um, struggling to get a position at Penn. Um, and, and so it's kind of amazing that, you know, you think of, of where they are now, they, they have Nobel Prizes and they're super established in their fields um, and where they started and, and where, you know, perseverance can, can carry them. Um, and, you know, you, you hear the story of immigrants all the time um, in science, you know, you think of, uh, for example, just World War II, just as one example, uh, World War II, you know, a lot of uh, Jewish people, a lot of uh, people found uh, refuge in uh, Great Britain, they found refuge in the U.S. Um, to escape Nazi Germany. And uh, one, you know, many physicists, many biologists um, were affected by this, um, found refuge this way, uh, including Nobel laureates like Albert Einstein, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and um, you may have heard that person before. And, uh, you know, it's really important to, um, you know, be embracive of all kinds of cultures when it comes to science. Science is like this universal language, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, it's not different for English versus Chinese versus some European language, but, you know, you have to embrace uh, different cultures, different viewpoints, um, because that's what makes, you know, science so beautiful. That's what, that's what makes, you know, all this progress go forward for humanity. That's basically all I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, you know, I'm really passionate about this topic. I'm really passionate about, you know, science in general, as you can probably tell. And, um, you know, it's just stories like this that um, really keep me going, you know, it's just hearing about this, um, you know, being able to celebrate it with Penn, my, you know, home institution. Um, it's really, it's really amazing. And, um, you know, this is a great day for Penn. This is a great day for science and uh, humanity too, you know, so I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.